in this life and in the next life. All of these things are mentioned in the Qur'an. Therefore, dhikran, Allah says, He described the Qur'an, dhikran, as a form of remembrance. فَمَعْنَ ذَلِكَ أَنَّ مَنْ إِبْتَعْدَ عَنِ الْقُرْآنِ الْكَرِيمِ كَانَ مِنَ الْغَافِلِينَ If the Qur'an is a form of dhikr, remembrance, then the person who is far away from the Qur'an, right, the one who's far away from the Qur'an, they're not in a state of dhikr. They're far away from the trait or the characteristic of remembrance, then this person is from the negligent. If a person is not upon remembrance, then they're negligent. They're from the people that are negligent. And a person, the only way that a person distances themselves from being negligent. A person can remove the negligence from their own self, from themselves, is that they have a portion of the Quran that they remember. They they uh, have a portion of of the Quran with them that they can review and that they can uh, make thicker from the Quran that they can refer back to. Meaning, the Quran keeps us in the form a state of thicker, in the state of remembering Allah Jalla wa'ala. And the further we the further we we are away from the Quran then the further we are away from remembering Allah Jalla Simple, right? 
that the further we are away from the Qur'an, Qira'atan, the further we are away from Tilawah, reciting the Qur'an, reading the Qur'an, understanding, reading the tafsir of the Qur'an, the further we, away, we are away from that, the further we are away from the remembrance of Allah, Tabarakah wa Ta'ala. And he mentions another area, he says, he speaks about the ayat, where Allah says, قال تعالى الذين آتيناهم الكتاب يتبونه حق تلاوته أولئك يؤمنون به In Surah Al-Baqarah, Ayah 121, where Allah says Those who have given the book and they recite it the way it's supposed to be recited حق تلاوته They recite it the way it's supposed to be recited, they believe in it These are the ones who believe in the book حق تلاوه How do we know if a person is reciting the book the way it's supposed to be recited. He says, "In the haqqa tilawati la yatamu illa bi thalatha umur." We know from three things that a person is not reciting it the way it's supposed to be recited, except that three things are present. Three things are present. He says, "The first thing, kiratu Quran wa husn tartili." Number one, the reading of the book and husn tartil that the qira'a, the recitation when a person recited that it has uh, some beauty to it, right? And hifdu ma tayassalamin and that a person does, they memorize some portion of the book some portion of the Qur'an is that he memorize whatever is easy for a person so haqqa tilawati a person recites the Qur'an as it's supposed to be recited is comprised of three things. He says, firstly, that their reading has some tartil that is read and is beautified to some extent, right? Along with that, that a person memorizes some portion of the, some portions of the, a portion of the Qur'an, whatever is easy for them, along with the qira'ah, the reading of it. That's number one. But that's not all. It's not enough just to uh, sound good. It's not enough that a person sounds good when they read the Quran, when they recite the Quran, or that they memorize the portion of it, they memorize some of the Quran, and that's it. That's enough. That's not enough. That doesn't mean haqqa tilawati. That doesn't mean that they have recited the Quran as it's supposed to be recited. Unless the next two issues, the next two things are combined along with that. Al amr al thani al tadabbur wa fahm al khitab. Uh, the second thing that has to be present is that a person ponders over the meanings of the Qur'an. A person reflects and tries to understand what is being said. What does Allah mean by that when he says that? As Allah said, Qala ta'ala, kitabun anzalnahu ilayka mubarakun liyadabbaru ayati. He said, a book that we have revealed to you a blessed book that we have revealed to you so that you may ponder and reflect over the ayat that you, so that you can reflect over the meaning of the verses in the Qur'an as Allah said in Surah Al-Sad وَقَالَ تَعَالَى أَفَلَمْ يَدَّبَّرُ الْقَوْلِ Don't they reflect and ponder over the meaning the meanings in the Qur'an in Surah Al-Mu'minun ayah number 68 Allah said Allah said another ayah أَفَلَا يَدَّبَّرُونَ الْقُرْآنِ Don't they ponder and think over the Qur'an, that it's not enough to sound good, it's not enough to know all of the Tajweed rules, and that a person's voice is great, all of that's beautiful, and that's part of it, but it doesn't stop there, that it has to be some tadabbur, it has to be some uh, thinking, that a person has to use their brain and their aql and try to understand what is my Lord commanding me to do, and what is my Lord telling me to stay away from, what, do, what, do, what does Islam encourage? What does Islam tell us to stay away from? All of these things are found in the Qur'an, but it takes tadabbu. Uh, it takes a person reflecting and thinking about the ayat that they're reading, the verses that they're reading. It's not a rush. So he says, وَيَكُونُ هَمُّهُ وَهُوَ يَطْلُ الْقُرْآنِ لَيْسَ مَتَى يَخْتِمْ الصُّورَةِ That a person shouldn't be concerned about when they're reading and reciting the Qur'an. The concern is not, and it shouldn't be, when am I going to finish this surah? 
How fast can I finish the sword? That's not the, the, that's the goal. Or he says, Oh, meta in tehi, minati lawa. When, how long is it going to be to have to stop reciting? How long do I have to recite? How long is this sword? How many eyes in this sword until I can stop and take a break? He says, Wa inna ma yakunu himmuhu wa huwa yatru al-Qur'an ma ta'aqidu anillah al-khitab. He said, a person, the intent, the qas should be, when am I going to gain some understanding? How long is it going to take me to start understanding what I'm reading? What am I, what am I going to understand what Allah is addressing us with in the Quran? Huh? He says, Allah. How long is it going to take me to understand what I'm reading? How long is it going to take me to understand the ayat that I'm reading, that I read every day, Al-Fatiha. How long is it going to take me to, until I can understand and explain back, maybe to somebody in my family who should be the first ones? How long is it going to take me until I can explain back to my wife what Al-Fatiha means and what it entails? Or for the wife, the same thing. How long is it going to take me to understand the tafsir of Al-Fatiha so that I can teach it to my husband if need be or teach it to my children? This should be the qas. When am I going to understand so that I can benefit and benefit my family? Meta yata'athar qalbi bil Qur'an. He says a person should be worried about the question should be when, when, am I, when is my heart going to be affected by the Qur'an? When is my heart going to be affected? Not when am I going to finish? How long is it going to take? How many Jews can I do? But when is my heart going to be affected? When is my heart going to be affected by the Qur'an? When am I going to start acting on the Qur'an? I done read it, read it, read it, but when am I going to start putting it into practice every day of my life? When am I going to start using it? Because we know the Messenger alayhi salam wa salam said the Qur'an, al-Qur'an, hujjatan lak o alayk, that the Qur'an is either going to be a proof for a person or a proof against a person. He says, "Mata'akunu min al-sadiqin, al-musufin bi dalika fi al-Qur'an." What am I going to be like the people who Allah described in the Qur'an as being from the truthful? How long is it going to take me to take on that trait, that characteristic of being from the truthful, as Allah described in the Qur'an? Mata'akunu min al-tawabin. What am I going to be from the people who repent? I read it and read it and read it, but what am I going to start taking on these characteristics? He said, "This should be. This should be." The qas, the goal of the person who sits to read the book of Allah Jalla wa Ala. And it's not just to hurry up and finish. As Imam Qala al Ajuri, Rahima Allah, O Men Tadabara Kalam, Kalamahu Arifa, Arab. Whoever thinks and ponders over the Quran and reflects on the meaning of the ayat, this person will learn who Allah is. This person will learn who Allah is. He said, وَعَرِفَ عَظِيمَ عَظِيمَ السُلْطَانَ عَظِيمَ السُلْطَانِهِ وَقُدْرَتِهِ وَقُدْرَتِهِ And this person will learn the greatness of Allah's power through reflecting over the Qur'an. Not just by reading it and, and a person don't understand what they're reading. Right? Through reflecting, the tadabbur. And he says, and through the Qur'an, through tadabbur, by pondering and reflecting, thinking what do the ayats mean, that a person will understand the virtue and the blessing that Allah has given to the believers. All of these things come through a tadabbur, as Imam Ajori said, Rahim Allah Ta'ala. He says, فَيَقْرَى so a person when they read they should fight against themselves to make sure that they're filling all of these things in that they're not just reading for the sake of reading but that they're reading the Quran for the sake of understanding and then on top of that action, implementing it using it in our lives وَلِهَذَا كَانَ بَعْضَ السَّلَفِ يَقُومُ بِاللَّيْلِ بِآيَةٍ وَاحِدًا And this is why some of the Salaf, they would stand and they would read and repeat the same ayat over and over throughout the night. Right? 
ونبينا عليه الصلاة والسلام قام ليلة بآية واحدة. And the Messenger عليه الصلاة والسلام he stood and he repeated the ayat over and over, one ayat throughout the night, over and over and over. And this brings the hadith of the man في الصحيح عن أبي سعيد الخضري رضي الله عنه أن رجلا سمع رجلا يقرأ قل هو الله أحد يرددها that a man during the time of the Messenger of Allah والسلام, he heard a man and kept repeating over and over and over throughout the night قل هو الله أحد and he kept repeating it over and over and over and over and over فلما أصبح جاء إلى رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم فذكر ذلك له وكأن الرجل يتقاضي يتقالها فقال الرسول عليه الصلاة والسلام والذي نفس بيدي إنها لتعدل ثلث ثلث القرآن. that the man when he found out he did this he kept repeating the same thing. he said والله والذي بنفس الصلاة. showing the serious and the greatness of their sins. Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah